Luxor in Egypt, a place that speaks and has touched many down the centuries. These wonderful temples have been standing for 3,000 years. In fact, many of ancient Egypt's monuments were built by slave labor. And sadly, human history is littered with examples of such exploitation. Today, globalization has opened up new markets for forced labor and human trafficking. Can this be stopped? That's the subject of our BBC World Debate. Lara, how would you define human trafficking? When I began doing this work 15 years ago, the word trafficking was rarely used. I worked in the Caribbean amongst people who were going to be undocumented migrants and who were paying people to get them journeys and jobs. And I'm willing to call that smuggling. I am not willing to call that trafficking when there is no abuse and when people want to do this. I oppose the idea that this should all be called slavery and that it's all about prostitution. Does human trafficking exist in your view? Very bad practices exist that I would be willing to call trafficking. This shift, radical shift in the economic logic of trafficking and slavery is what has caused this phenomenon to explode in the last 20 years, particularly after the fall of the Berlin Wall, and get our attention finally. So how did it, why are we talking about slavery suddenly? We're talking about the definition of trafficking here, and we've already slid into slavery. It's not that this is what's wrong. It's not, are you saying it's exactly the same? Are you just trying to change the words? While it is possibly a separate phenomenon and maybe a different network involved in getting them to the exploitation, it is intricately linked with the purpose, which is forced labor or slave-like exploitation. Not all the time, no. I don't agree with that. No, Explain why an I enormous agree. amount of this. So my research has been about migration for 15 years or so. Um, enormous numbers of the people that are getting into situations that probably everyone in this room would not wish to have to get into opted in some way to decide to leave their country. It, they decided somehow. This is not complete duping and people being hijacked and, and kidnapped. The fact that the working conditions were not exactly the same as what they'd be in the formal sector has to do with not having papers and it being um, informal sector labor. This is not, we can't make everything be the same. Well, I don't think there's a 13-year-old child in the world that would choose to be raped for profit. I don't believe that that exists. And so to argue the word trafficking, I think, is, 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 is actually is spending time on, on something that, that we can actually utilize this time to inform people about the industry of, of buying and selling human beings or coercing human beings into exploitation. I must take issue with the shape of this debate now because I feel like your contributions are just to throw doubt and confusion and chaos into a discussion that should be about finding solutions rather than arguing. I just don't see the positivity or the constructiveness of this debate right now, and I would like to see it move forward into a way where we're really learning things rather than arguing just okay. for the sake of arguing. Oh, thank you. I would say that in the British tradition, a debate involves dissent, and that I was invited because I have a different point of view. And I would, I would, say, I would say that it might seem odd that I support you and agree with you, because I don't agree with the substance of what you're saying, but you're right to voice your opinion. and really highlight the problem that we in the police face with each individual. We've got to make sure that we can prove that the person is a victim. Now, I, I disagree with you. I think it's, it's easier to do if we can create an environment where the victim feels safe and protected from the police and protected from others. But uh, I do agree and applaud your, your right to... But what Laura is saying, she's not negating necessarily what you're saying. She's merely saying... Be wary of generalizations, these sweeping statements that perhaps... There's a particular the point that I'd like to make, that we all, everyone has met the people they have met for a particular reason. There are many people in this field who have only met the worst kind of victim. In this trafficking industry, the victims are brainwashed. They don't have the power to, to stand up for themselves. I don't see why we have to do this weird psychologizing thing. It seems to me that it would be possible to allow for diversity and not make these enormous generalizing statements. It is not necessary to do that. There are many, many undocumented migrants who may have had a rough time or something incredibly bad happen 
on the way and who may be selling sex without really liking to, but have figured that that's the way they will be able to pay off their debt best, and who, for different kinds of reasons, have decided, I'm going to do this for a while. There's no need to do a kind of neo-colonialist, we know best, I will rescue you because you have been brainwashed. It's going too far. If you have a, an actual person who's there and you can prove it's brainwashed, fine. But I don't know why we get into these kinds of terms so easily. I'm not willing to reduce this to a story about the absolute worst case in which I will completely agree with you. But the law and order kind of frame here is being used to abuse the rights of large numbers of people who do not fit this brainwashed, helpless need, need, person in need of rescue. I hear that you are very much on the side of the migrants and that I, there's no question here about that. We're not about criminalizing migrants. All right, in a sentence, each of you, best way to combat human trafficking, just a sentence. Pursue, prosecute, and punish them. Consider the neo-colonialist possibilities in a rescue industry that thinks that it's going to run in with policemen and rescue people that and have nothing to offer them afterward except homes and sewing machines.